Today we're going to look at aeroplane wings and how they work. If you think of an aeroplane, we have a fuselage, there's generally two wings, and a vertical stabiliser at the back. There's a cockpit at the front and windows down the side, and wheels underneath. And if we looked at the plane from the front, we'd see the vertical stabiliser on the top and the wings coming out of the side like this. Here's the cockpit and nose and the wheels. And of course the engines which usually hang off the wings. Now if we were to take a section view of the wing, looking at its profile, we'd see a plane wing isn't just flat on the top and bottom. There are many different designs of aeroplane wing or aerofoil, but the basic principle is that the top of the wing is more curved than the bottom. It's often taught that as the wing cuts through the air particles when it's moving forward, the particles hit the front of the wing, some travel the shorter distance straight underneath, and some are pushed over the top, taking the longer distance over the curve. Since they're travelling a greater distance, these upper particles will have to travel at a higher speed than the particles on the lower side of the wing. It's often believed that we can use Bernoulli's principle, which suggests the faster moving particles on the top gives us a lower pressure over the top surface of the wing, and as there's now a pressure difference between the top and the bottom of the wing, we generate lift. But for Bernoulli's principle to be correct, it was assumed that if one air particle went over the top of the wing and one underneath, they would take the same amount of time for them to leave the trailing edge. This has since been proved incorrect, and if two particles hit the leading edge at the same time, if one does go over the top and one underneath the bottom of the wing, they do not leave the trailing edge together. The faster moving one at the top will leave first. So the equal time argument for explaining lift, which is assumed in Bernoulli's principle, doesn't stand up. Now it is true that the air moving over the longer surface of the wing does move faster than the air underneath, resulting in a lower pressure but it is also necessary for the wing to deflect the air particles downwards. So as the air comes over the wing, the airstream continues on its path as it leaves the wing. If the whole wing is also slightly angled, this also helps achieve this effect. The air is deflected downwards by the wing, causing the wing to lift. Newton's third law of motion. I thought it would be fun to try making our own wing out of paper and seeing if we could get it to fly. So I took a sheet of stiff A4 paper, folded it over, and cut it so that one half of the fold was slightly longer than the other. This will allow me to have a curve over the top of the wing. I used tape to hold it in place. So we now have something which looks like this. I measured the length and put a marker halfway along, about an inch back from the front. I used a knife to make a small hole in the top, then I poked a skewer through to make a hole in the bottom too. Next I took a drinking straw, chopped a piece off,
and threaded it through the holes in the wing, like this. And I held the straw in place with some thin strips of tape. From the offcut of paper we had, I cut out a vertical stabiliser and stuck it centrally to the wing to help stop it rotating when I try it out. And that's our wing complete. You can see the straw is slightly angled. which will help to tip the back of the wing slightly downwards. Next I took some strong string and we need to tie it to something sturdy up high. Thread the other end through the wing like this. Then hold the string down with something and pull it nice and taut. Next, I'm going to use a hairdryer switched on to cold air to see if we can get the wing to take off. And it pretty much does straight away. You can see here from the position I'm holding the hairdryer, nearly all the air is going over the top of the wing. But we're still able to raise the wing and make it fly. If I position the airstream more underneath the wing, we lose our vertical stabilisation a bit. And now I'm just blowing the wing up from underneath. But having the air going both above and below the wing makes it far more stable. It can be a bit tricky getting it off the ground to begin with. There's a bit of a knack to it. And we can raise and lower it up and down the string. Pretty cool, huh? Try not to just blow it up from underneath. It becomes pretty unstable and it's not really what we're trying to achieve. We're looking to try and hold it at the sweet spot. If I hold the hairdryer dead still, the wing does look pretty stable. And I can even make it rotate on the string a bit. Oh, I've dropped it. It's a great fun experiment. Kids will love it and it's pretty easy to try. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you want to see more, you can click on the links or take a look at my YouTube channel page. Stay safe, have fun, and as always, thanks for watching.